Hello, everybody. The Lawn Gnome is here. They see a regular guy can follow impossible dreams. Maybe they'll do the same. one that got away. Like last year, I actually have a triple feature for you. But this is not going to be three reviews of three films that most people considered horrible. These were actually three films that most people had a lot of mixed reviews on. Some said that they were relatively good, and these were also three topics that I was really interested in based on the plots of each and every one of these individual films. And I'm also happy to say that this is actually a very diverse group of three films, and I'm looking forward to giving you the rundown and my thoughts on each and every one of them. So the first film that we're going to take a look at is one that came out in the end of December of last year, and this was Concussion, which of course starred one of my favorite actors in Hollywood, Will Smith, as he played the now-famed Dr. Bennett Amalu, who is the doctor who actually discovered the issues that were going on with pro football players in regards to concussions and head trauma. And as somebody who is a huge football fan, and someone who has been listening to a lot of very famous sports broadcasters talking about this topic, and they're still talking about it today because it still is a very hot-button issue. I was very curious to see how this story and this specific topic would be portrayed in the film. So Concussion was not a terrible movie, but there were definitely a couple of things that I felt were much to be desired because they were very much lacking. I mean, don't get me wrong, the acting in this film is fantastic. Will Smith never lets me down, and you also have a great performance from Albert Brooks, and you even have have Luke Wilson showing up later on as the now current NFL commissioner Roger Goodell. It was also very interesting to see them talking about certain famous players who went through all of these issues and really took a good look at what was going on with them before they unfortunately decided to end their lives. Well, not all of them did, but some of them did, unfortunately. It was just amazing to see how this doctor, who wasn't even an American citizen, trying to become an American citizen, decided that this was something that he needed to let people know. And it was amazing to see him actually battle the NFL because of how popular football is in America. It practically is, as they say in the movie, owns a day of the week. And just to know that this was something that he kept trying to fight for, not for the sake of ending football, but for the sake of actually just trying to let people be aware of what they need to do because of what is going on. The thing that I would say that the movie was lacking in was just the fact that I really want to see a little bit more of the scientific elements behind it. And for some strange reason, there was a love story involving Dr. Ben and Amalu and his now wife, who was played by Gugu Mbatha-Re, who was another person in Hollywood who I absolutely love, and she also did a very good job, but I really didn't feel that the focus on the love story was really necessary, and I feel that that really took away from the film. Concussion was definitely a good watch, but it's not one of those movies that I can really see myself seeing numerous, numerous times. Maybe if it's on HBO again, I'll give it a watch, but I also wouldn't consider adding this movie to my collection. But if you're a football fan, if you're someone who knows a lot about what's going on, someone who's really interested in discussing this topic with others, then I would definitely say to give Concussion a go, and I'm going to give it two and a half out of four stars. The next film that I want to talk about is the film Everest, which came out at the end portion of last year as well, somewhere between October and November, and it was the story of the 1996 group of people from Australia and New Zealand and a couple of people from the United States and Japan that took a trip all the way to the top of Mount Everest for the thrill of knowing that they managed to reach the summit of this legendary mountain, but on their way down they encounter a horrible snowstorm and everything basically can be understood from there. So this was a movie that I sort of had some mixed feelings about and a lot of people said that from a standpoint of actually seeing it in the movie theaters it was an amazing thing. So yeah, I could definitely say maybe I should have seen it in theaters because I really did not enjoy this movie as much as I thought I would, but knowing that they showed these gorgeous scenes of the mountain itself and all of the ways that people were trying to reach the top of Mount Everest was definitely crazy to watch. But the problem was there was really a lack of character development. I think the two major people in this movie who I know are Josh Brolin and Kira Knightley, and Kira Knightley really doesn't climb the mountain, she's the wife of one of the people who climbs the mountain, and Josh Brolin is one of the mountain climbers. And you see 
these characters doing all these amazing things, but they really don't focus on developing these characters. And by the time the storm actually hits, and you see all of these horrible events unfolding, and believe me, some of these are very horrible to watch, especially considering that this is based on a true story, and you actually find out what happened to some of these people. The fact that I couldn't relate to these characters really made me upset that I didn't feel for them when all of these horrible events were taking place on the way down the mountain. I really wouldn't recommend this movie to people, but if you're interested in seeing these kinds of films, then I would definitely say give it a shot. It's not a movie that I really plan to see multiple times. It's not a movie that I want to get on DVD. So I would say, in my case, I'm going to give Everest 2 out of 4. Now, the next film that I want to talk about, crazily enough, is the one that most people gave the worst rating on compared to the other two that I just mentioned, and that is The 33. The story of the 33 Chilean miners who got trapped in the mine and got rescued by the government of Chile with a whole bunch of assistance from other countries, including the United States. This movie blew me away. I absolutely loved this story. I loved the performances of Antonio Banderas, Juliette Binoche, and Lou Diamond Phillips. Lou Diamond Phillips was a big name in the 1980s. He was in movies like La Bamba and Stand Tall and Deliver, but oh my goodness, his performance in the 33 was unbelievable. I was shocked that he and Antonio Banderas did not get nominated for Academy Awards because unlike Everest, the character development was abundant in this movie. Even though it didn't feel like such a long movie, you really got to see these 33 men, young and old, bond together, learn to survive, make sure that each and every one of them was okay, really being a team and a family until the rescue mission actually came to get them out of that deep dark hole underneath this large mountain. And then when you see the government officials trying to band together with people who know how to drill holes in the ground to try and get these guys out of there, it was just so amazing to see the chemistry from all sides of the coin, including the families of the miners that are trapped in there and how they try and talk to the government officials to find out what's going on. It was just so amazing to watch all of these characters as this true story actually unfolded. That's actually one of the things that all three of these films have in common. They are all based on true stories. And I would definitely say out of all of them, the 33 was the best telling. I think there could be one small thing that some people could say that was not right about the 33, and of course with all the talk about diversity over the past month, there were two characters that were portrayed by white people when they should have been portrayed by people of Hispanic origin. Now, Juliette Binoche is a fantastic actress, but I was really surprised that they didn't tap someone like Selma Hayek or maybe Penelope Cruz to do something like this, because I think that one of them in a role like that probably would have done a great job. But still, Juliette Binoche and Gabriel Byrne did great jobs portraying these Chilean people. So, The 33 is definitely one of the better movies that I have seen in a while. I would definitely recommend you to see this film. Is this a movie that I could see hundreds and hundreds of times? No, not necessarily, but I would totally watch this movie again. I don't think I would own this movie either, and that's one of the few things that I will say that I'm kind of upset about in regards to all three of these films, especially a movie like The 33, because it's a good watch, it really is, but it's just not one of those movies that I could see myself sacrificing some time to watch numerous, numerous times, but I will still say, see The 33. I'm giving it three out of four. So thank you very much, everybody. Please put your comments in the box below. Let's talk about any one or all three of these movies. And those movies, again, are Concussion, Everest, and The 33. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next One That Got Away, and actions speak louder than words.